for Vancouver Kingsway. Thank you. Honourable Speaker, a question for the Minister of Health this weekend. Mark Isaacs, one of the many people who, whose lives were permanently harmed by Liberal misconduct and the wrongful dismissal of health researchers, spoke up for the first time. He detailed how he was wrongly attacked and threatened and lost his position in spite of having done absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, numerous researchers, in addition to those wrongfully dismissed, saw their careers, work, and reputations permanently and negatively affected by government threats and smears through no fault of their own. These include, for example, researchers such as Barbara Minces of the Therapeutics Initiative, researchers at the University of British Columbia and the University of Victoria, and many others, including Mr. Isaacs. In particular, UBC and UVic researchers were smeared in the second paragraph of a press release by the allegation crafted by the Premier's communications team and spoken by the Minister of Health, linking them to a non-existent RCMP investigation. Does the Minister of Health even know how many people were damaged by liberal misconduct in this affair? Does he not need to provide some public explanation for the smears by the, the previous Minister of Health of those researchers on September 6, 2012? Minister of Health. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, the member well knows that uh, the Finance and Government Services Committee is considering a letter that I sent to the committee asking them to refer this matter to the Ombudsperson's Office. I know the committee is working hard and in good faith, and I uh, fully expect and hope that they will send that referral to the Ombudsperson's Office so that all of us may understand all of the circumstances regarding this particular case. Okay. Member for Vancouver Kingsway on a supplemental. Well, the minister and the government seem to believe that they can smear without consequence, because that's what's happened in this case. No information was forwarded to the RCMP from the Ministry of Health, and yet they saw fit to smear agencies, to smear literally dozens of researchers, Honourable Speaker, without consequence. When I asked the Minister last week about the Therapeutics Initiative, he claimed that they'd always had a good relationship with them. Other conclusions he described as, quote, insane, Honourable Speaker except the public record is clear. They cut off their funding, threatened their existence, and smeared their researchers with the taint of an RCMP investigation that didn't exist for two and a half years, Honourable Speaker. These smears were perpetuated by Liberal politicians and the Premier's communications team. The public was repeatedly misled with respect to these issues. Does the minister responsible believe Liberal members and the Premier's team have that right? to smear people without consequence, Honourable Speaker? Does he have any explanation for the deliberate effort to link researchers at the University of British Columbia, and this was the Minister of Health, researchers of the University of British Columbia and the University of Victoria, to a non-existent RCMP investigation? Minister of Health. Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, I have... Uh commented uh, on uh, the member's uh, penchant for uh, wild speculation and uh, uh, complex conspiracy theories. Uh, let me say this, Honourable Speaker, there was concern, there was concern that uh, data had uh, been misused. Uh, that's a serious concern. There was concern about awarding of contracts and procurement practices. That was a serious concern. Members of the ministry met with the RCMP. Members of the ministry members. met with the RCMP on several occasions in 2012 and 2013, and the RCMP were interested in the work of the Office of the Comptroller General on contracting and procurement practices. Honourable Speaker, if the member wishes to have all of this information uh, clarified, he would encourage the members of his committee on the Government Finance and uh, Government Services Committee to send this to the Ombudsperson for a full review. Member for Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. On March 5th, 10th, 11th and 26th, April 23rd and 30th and May 25th, 
the opposition rose in this place and told the government their wholesale price reform for beer and wine pricing would lead to higher prices for consumers and hurt BC businesses, especially craft brewers. The Attorney General told us we were beer mongering. Now, three months after the policy change, the Minister of Transportation is telling the media, quote, I can assure craft brewers inside and outside of Kamloops the government's intention is to fix this. The member for Richmond Steveston has also suddenly announced a review of the Attorney General's policy changes. That her new policy would increase craft beer prices was entirely predictable. Will the Attorney General fix it and when? Madam Attorney. Madam Speaker, I am pleased to be able to report to the member opposite and the members opposite about the, uh, about the success of the craft beer industry. Madam Speaker, and congratulations to the craft beer makers in British Columbia, Madam Speaker, for the, for the success of their industry and for producing a product that people love and for, for, for creating so much employment and creating a really interesting uh, industry in British Columbia. Madam Speaker, in the first three months of this year, Madam Speaker, the craft beer sales at BC liquor stores have increased by more than 50% over last year. That would be April, May, and June the first three months of the changes in, in liquor distribution in British Columbia. Craft beer sales, Madam Speaker, have tripled, almost tripled over the past five years. And Madam Speaker, in the past two years alone, nearly 50 brewery licenses have been issued throughout BC, and the number of licensed breweries has nearly doubled since 2012. It has trouble with the liquor changes, Madam Speaker, but I can assure you British Columbians don't. Member for Vancouver Point Grey on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, and I'm sure all the members here can hear why craft brewers are so incredibly frustrated with this member. When the Campaign for Real Ale wrote to the Attorney General and told her about the craft beer price hikes, she said it wasn't her fault. She said, quote, a variety of factors can impact a product's retail price, including increases or decreases in supplier-related costs, the strength of the dollar, price rounding, and price promotions, unquote. Only the Attorney General, Honourable Speaker, could blame the price increases in products made of Canadian products and produced, retailed, and consumed in BC on the American dollar. <laughs> Three Ranges Brewing, Red Collar Brewing, and others say the Attorney General's policy changes raise prices and is hurting their business. Will she listen to them and change her policy? Madam Attorney. Madam Speaker, this government is extremely supportive of the craft beer industry. Uh, we have a very granular um, interest in, in the industry, so much so, Madam Speaker, that my parliamentary secretary for liquor and my staff are speaking to every brewery that brings a concern to government because we do want to know what the issues are and to make changes if we need to make them. But, Madam Speaker, let me continue. 112 breweries in British Columbia, 90 of them are craft breweries. Since April 1st, six new breweries have started making beer in British Thank Columbia. You, Thank you. And, Madam Speaker, I have to add a note here. South Vancouver has now has its first craft brewery. Congratulations to Dogwood Brewery in, South, in, the, in the wonderful riding of Vancouver Fraserview. 